Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. As you probably know, we've recently had some record cold weather and power outages across much of the United States. Today I want to discuss some steps that you can take if you find yourself in a cold weather emergency without any power to make sure that your boas and other reptiles stay warm. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming boa videos. The first thing you want to figure out in a power emergency is how cold is it actually getting in your boa's enclosure. And so if we're talking about some small drops in temperature for relatively short periods of time, odds are your boa is going to be fine. Of course, you always want to try to maintain your boa's desired temperature range, but if the temperatures are dropping to no lower than, say, the mid to low 60s for no more than a day or two, odds are if your boa is in decent health, it's going to be completely fine without any intervention. So if you live in a place that's not too cold and the power goes out occasionally, your boa should be fine without taking any preventative steps. I sometimes get people emailing me with these emails. They're kind of freaking out because the cage temperature dropped down to 72 for a few hours. And your boa should be completely fine. If, you know, assuming the boa was in decent health. If your boa was, you know, somewhat immunocompromised or it wasn't in ideal health, there is a possibility that it could uh, get a respiratory infection if the temperatures fall too low for too long. But typically, if we're talking about just a day or two and it's not any colder than the mid 60s, you're going to be fine. If the temperature is going to drop below about 60 and it's going to be prolonged for more than a day or two, you really should intervene to keep your animals warm. And there are a number of different things you can do. Some of them are more complicated than others. Some of them are more permanent solutions than others. And it really depends on how large of a snake collection you have and how much you have invested in your operation to d decide you know, what to do. But it's really something that's good to plan and have a plan before the power outage happens. I recently faced this kind of situation. You know, I live in a very progressive state that doesn't have enough electricity for all its 40 million residents. So because of this, there's regularly rolling blackouts here in California when they run out of electricity. So that's one issue. Another issue is that our power company, PG&E or Pacific Gas and Electric, hasn't properly maintained its power line infrastructure. So as a result, they regularly expect their power lines to start fires. In fact, they've killed dozens of people and caused millions and millions of dollars of damage from the fires that have been set. But you know, rather than maintaining their power lines and fixing the problem, they just turn the power off. Because if there are weather conditions that it's likely that a fire might start, PG&E simply turns off the power, sometimes to millions and millions of people. And once they turn it down, even if they get the all clear, it takes them several days to turn it back up again. So we can expect these regular power shutdowns pretty much every fall when the weather conditions are such that there might be fires. I mean, you know, great solution to the problem, but you know, don't get me started on that. So back in 2019, I learned that this was likely to happen and I put forth a plan for myself, which I'll share for you in a couple minutes. Luckily, it only happened for a few days in 2019, and we didn't have any PG&E induced power shutoffs in 2020, although there were certainly threats of this. But now on to what solutions you can take. You know, the most permanent and probably the most effective solution would be to generate your own power. So you can go, you can buy a generator for anywhere from, you know, a few hundred to thousands of dollars, depending on the size and the output of the generator. And this represents a good solution if you have the money and you have the space for the generator and you can operate it. It's always good to have a power backup. And there certainly might be other reasons besides your snakes that you want backup power in the case of a power shutdown. Another solution to generate your own power would be to install a solar system and to have a battery that you can use to store the solar generated power so that you're not reliant on the grid. And this is like the Cadillac of solutions. You can have no need for the grid. You can make your own power and you'll be good with your stored power 
for probably up to several days or even weeks depending on the size of your battery. The problem with that solution is it's really expensive to get a solar system and a battery and it takes a long time to install. So for the average person with a few snakes, it probably doesn't make sense to install a solar system and battery as a backup power source. But there are a lot of simpler ways to keep your snakes warm, which I'll go into next. So of course there are alternate heat sources besides electric heat if your power goes out. And the simplest, which most of you probably have, is a fireplace or wood burning stove. And you can use wood, you can burn wood, you can stay warm with the wood, you can bring your snakes in proximity to your fireplace or your wood burning stove so they stay warm also. Of course you want to be really careful that they're not too close. So preferably you want to closely monitor the temperature of your snakes near the fireplace or wood burning stove. So the solution I settled on back a year and a half ago was to get a propane burning heater and I got this model. This model is called the uh, Portable Buddy by Mr. Heater and it actually burns propane. And so you can see this is the propane tank. It's got this one liter propane tank and I'm not going to turn it on but basically it's got these flames here and it puts out quite a bit of heat. In fact um, this particular unit heated up my snake room no problem and it heats up pretty quickly. The downside is that you only get about four to six hours or so from each bottle of propane. You know, so you have to go through a lot of propane if you're in an extended power outage. But you can actually use a propane tank like a larger propane tank that you use for your gas grill. You can hook up and according to the instructions you get over a hundred hours of operation with the larger propane tank. And so I got this unit and we had this power outage that was back in October of 2019. And being in California, one fortunate thing is it really doesn't get that cold. So although it was probably getting down into the 50s and 40s at night, I was only had to turn this uh, heater on for a few hours at a time to warm up my snake room. And so I would basically turn it on let it warm up and then shut it down. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this when you're not at home because it's got these kind of flames that kind of shoot out. They're kept behind this cage. Um, so it could be a fire hazard. But in my case, I only needed to operate it for a few hours just to heat up the snake room to uh, the desired temperature. And this is the box that it came from. It's again, a Mr. Heater Portable Buddy. And I'm sure there are other brands of these propane heaters. But I think at the time it was somewhere around 70 or 80 bucks, something in that range. So not too expensive. And it really solved the problem nicely for me here in California. Another option for heating up your snake in a power emergency are to use these heat packs. And these are the same heat packs I use for shipping. So they have a 40 hour life. Basically you just open up the pack, you expose the chemicals inside the pack to the oxygen and they start to give off heat. And when you use them in a styrofoam line cardboard box shipping, they keep, the, they keep a nice internal box temperature somewhere around 80 degrees or so. Um, they're rated for 40 hours. Sometimes they last a little longer. Sometimes they don't last quite as long. There's also, you can get them rated for 72 hours, which last a little bit longer. But they work pretty good. And you know, if you have small snakes or just a few snakes, all you might need to do is have a box of these, these ready to go. So in case of a heat emergency, you can put one of these heat uh, emitters in each of your snake's cages. You may also, if depending on the size of the cage, you might wanna move your snake to a smaller container, even a foam lined uh, shipping box to put the heat pack in, or you might want, even wanna put it in a snake bag or pillowcase, just so it's in close proximity to the heat pack. Another way of storing heat for your reptile to keep it warm during a power outage is to use a hot water bottle. And you can use pretty much any cast off bottle like this gallon milk jug to hold water. And you know, once the water heats up, it takes quite a while for it to cool down and it emits a lot of heat. So this assumes that you have a source of, of power to heat the water. You would need like a, uh, a 
gas stove or you know a fireplace or something where you can heat water and you can transfer it to your hot water bottles. But uh, if you have the hot water bottles, it's another thing to think about using in a power emergency. One convenient and reliable source of heat for your reptile in an emergency is your own body heat. And to do this, you're going to want to put your boa or other reptile in a snake bag or pillowcase like this. And we'll just tie this off. And then once you have your animal contained, you're going to want to put it close to your body, for example, in your coat like this. And it's a little bit of a challenge to zip up my jacket with the bag there. You want to make sure you don't drop your snake. But now that you have it bundled up in your jacket, you're going to keep your snake nice and warm. Incidentally, this is a really good way if you have to bring your snake out and the weather's kind of cold, to just tuck it in your jacket, you know, to maintain that warmth from your body heat. And if you have a small to medium collection, no more than a few boas, it'd be pretty practical just to put them all in your jacket. And of course, it depends on the size of the boa as well. If you have a slightly larger collection, maybe you could get your significant other, your kids, or friends if they're staying with you to put animals or in, you know, snakes into their jackets as well. And so during the day, you can have the animals in your jacket like this. But I've even heard of people who are really dedicated that will take their boas into the bed with them at night. They have them in these uh, snake bags and they bundle up the covers and they keep nice and warm using their own body heat to generate heat for the boas. So this is a pretty dependable way to keep your boas warm and keep them above the surrounding temperatures. So those are some ideas for how to plan for power outages and keep your snakes warm. And I would highly recommend that you have a plan before the power outage hits so you'll know exactly what you need to do to ensure the well-being of your animals. I thought I'd end the video by showing you this beautiful Tar Humar boa. This is a 2018 male holdback. And I held this guy back just because of his outstanding color. He's just got so much pink. This is from my high pink line of Tar Humar boas. He's got this beautiful circle back pattern down his back and just a real gorgeous looking animal this guy is now going on three years old he probably could be ready to breed next year um, i'm not sure if i have a female that i want to pair this guy up with but you know we'll have to see but just a real beautiful looking boa he's uh not quite three feet at this point he's probably not going to get that much bigger than this so these are a great dwarf boa if you want a full boa experience, and a portable pint-sized package. The Tar Himara might be the boa for you. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to reach out to me with any questions or comments you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.